Okay, I'd like to tell you about charged particles moving through electric and magnetic fields. Okay, so uh, not just magnetic fields, but electric fields too. And so um, as a particle moves along through um, fields like a B field, an E field, and a G field, a gravitational field, an electric field, and a magnetic field, then it experiences all these different forces. Okay, now um, a lot of times you don't include the mg force because it's it's so much smaller than the other two. Okay, so a lot of times they'll tell you to affect the gravitational uh, forces because they're negligible. Okay, so um, in a lot of these cases, then what they are what they do is they want the particle to be moving along, say in this direction, and they'd like it to go straight even though it has a force, say, from an electric field this way. So let's say if the electric field is this way. This is E. And if it's... Um, so that would be pushed down. That's going to be pushing this down. So we need the magnetic force to push it up so it can go straight. We'd like it to go straight. And so let's see, the magnetic force, in order to push it up, I'm going to put my, my hand this way. And um, if the thumb is pointing that way, which is the velocity, and my field, the field's into the paper, you see how that gives you a force upward? So that means that we need the B to be into the paper. And remember that um, what we're seeing here is the feathers of the arrows going away, going into the paper. So uh, that's, this is the magnetic field. And so that will put, so you'll have an electric force, Fe, and you'll have a magnetic force. And if they balance out, then the, then the particle will go straight through. Okay, so um, let's take a look at that then. Um, so if we, in order to get those to balance out, we'd like the magnetic force to equal the electric force. So that would be, um, let's assume that the velocity of the thing is perpendicular to the field. So it's just QVB. I guess I didn't need that vector sign. That's equal to Q times E. The Qs cancel. And so the velocity that's needed is um, E over B of velocity. So apparently if I divide an, an electric field by a magnetic field, I get, um, I get that it the velocity of the thing. I get a velocity. All right, so that's that's how an object can go through unhindered. Now, am I suggesting you memorize E over B? No, it's a very simple derivation. All right, now, um, sometimes we have a situation then where a particle, this is called a mass spectrometer, and um, a particle will start in a region with, um, a, in say, a capacitor with a, with a voltage of V across it. And uh, it will accelerate across here. So it will start here and it will accelerate and gain some speed. And then at some point, we'll force it to go through this. Th this will be called region 1. Then region 2... There'll be, there's going to be, say, an electric field, um, let's say, downward. And if this is a positive charge, then that means that this would be the positive side of the capacitor. And this would be the negative side of the capacitor. So this thing accelerates across here. And then it goes in here. And in order to go straight, we'd like it to go straight... We need a, a magnetic field. Let's see, this, this would normally just get pushed down from this field. That means that this is the positive side of the plates. This is, a, this is one plate and the second plate of another capacitor. And this is the negative side. In order for that to then be buoyed up, I'd like a field to be into the page. See how that pushes up? So I'm going to put some X's here. That's the magnetic field. So it will go through if if the electric and magnetic fields um, balance one another out. And then it enters a region where uh, there's just a magnetic field. And in this third region, 
Um, when it enters the electric, the magnetic field, let's say that it goes like this and goes in a circle. Okay, now, uh, what type of field would cause it to go in a circle like that? Well, I'd like it to, when it comes in here, I'd like it to be pushed down. It's a positive charge. It's heading that way. So that means that this field has to be up at us. See how that, that's going to give us, if I put a dot, a bunch of dots here for the magnetic field, there is no electric field in this region. Let's say that the field is uniform. It means it's not changing in space. And it's also constant. It's not changing in time. And so it goes in here like this and it turns around like that, then um, you see how if it's heading this way, it's going to get pushed downward. But if it's heading now, like right here, if it's heading down, it will be pushed um, inward. And then if it's heading this way, then it will be pushed that way. So that's why it goes in a circle. Okay, now um, this is what we'll call region 3. This whole thing is called a, a Bainbridge mass spectrometer, or I'll just call it a mass spectrometer. And what it's used for is to separate isotopes that have very similar masses. This mass spectrometer. So um, if you have two isotopes of, say, uranium, 235 and 238, 238 has three more neutrons than 235. And so um, it, it actually is slightly more massive. So when it goes through here, what happens is it will take a wider circle, a slightly wider circle, and you can collect the 238 and the 235. So this would be like uranium-235, and this would be uranium-238. Okay, so let me show you the physics of, of each one of these, region 1, region 2, and region 3. All right, so region one, that physics is um, E equals E prime. So you'd say E, the physics of region one is E equals E prime. And so the energy it has at the beginning is VQ, that's potential energy, VQ. And then the energy it has once it gets to the other side is one half MV squared. Where the, that's a velocity. So you can find the velocity. The velocity is going to be 2VQ um, all over M. Square root it. Okay, that's region 1. Region 2 is the region I just showed you. Region 2, or that's the physics I just showed you. So we'd like the magnetic force to equal the electric force. And so that's going to be QV cross B, or QVB, is going to equal QE. The Qs cancel, and V is equal to E over B. Okay, so that's the, the only ones that will make it through there is uh, you set your E and your, v, your B right, and then the, they'll go right through there unhindered. Okay, this last section then, it's got... Um, it's going in a circle. So as you might guess, we're going to use Newton's second law. So that's um, for region 3. And region 3 is going to just be um, A equals F naught over M. And A is V squared over R. That V. So it's V squared over R. We could substitute in E over B in there. It's V squared over R where R is the radius of the circle. Now it just has the magnetic field on it there. So that's going to be QVB all over M. Now the V the V is always perpendicular to B. See how the V is all the B is into the page and V no matter which way you go it's always perpendicular to B. Convince yourself of that. And so we don't need the cross product anymore. We can so um so I can solve I can get rid of one of the V's and I can solve say for R R will equal um, mv over qb. Okay, I have um, 20 seconds to make a very important point, and that is that in this region, no work is ever done by, a gravi by the magnetic field because um, the force is always perpendicular to dr. So that's dr, and that's the force. So that never does any work. Gravity, right, bye.